Hey guys, my name is Katie Guzman and I'm one of the instructional technology coaches for Muskegon ISD. I wanted to show you guys uh, how to integrate two of our tips of the day in order to really help maximize you guys' teaching potential, but also keep not only yourself organized, but help keep parents and students organized as well. So one of the tips that we shared this week was this distance learning lesson plan template. Um, this is something that I'm gonna be working off of. I think it's a great resource for us to use. And some of you guys already have um, something like this already in your classrooms or your digital classrooms. So if you don't like this template, perfectly fine. If not, I'll include a link uh, on this video or in the description of this video as well. The second one I'm gonna talk about, which um, I had no idea that you could do this, but you can take one of your activities from Google Classroom and link it directly into something. So any of your slides presentations, your um, just anything you're using, you can have the kids click on that and it will take them directly to that Google Classroom assignment link, which I think is awesome. Um, so we're gonna really talk about those two things and how to use that template um, that we have as well. So this is, uh, the copy that I have. Whenever you guys do it, it will force you to make a copy and then you can manipulate it as you will. Uh, as you notice, it says our week and the month and days here, uh, your subject and your grade level, um, just to kind of help you keep organized and help them keep organized. Also, you'll notice that for each day of the week, it has one, two, three, and four. That's just showing the, like off to the side that there are four tasks that I would like my kids to complete on Monday. So let's say I just want them to do three tasks. Uh, I can just click on the circle that has a four in it and I can go ahead and delete that. Ooh, of course I'm deleting the text right now. Uh, so make sure you click on the circle and you can delete that. Uh, additionally, I can just scoot these over just to make it, you know, a little bit more centered, aesthetically pleasing, uh, whatever. Uh, something else that I could do is if I want them to know that they can click on the number one and go to the slide for activity one, I can highlight this number one and press command K if I'm on a Mac. If you're on a Chromebook or on a PC, you can press control K and you'll get the same thing. So I can link it to something specific or I can actually link it to some slides in this presentation. So for the first task, I'm gonna want them to go to slide two. So I'll click on slide two and click apply. So now whenever my kids click on that number one, it will show slide two and it'll take me directly to slide two. Okay. Same thing that I can do for the rest of these. Uh, you just need to make sure that your corresponding uh, slide will go with the correct task. Okay. Also make sure if you delete a number off of here that you're also deleting it off um, on your slides as well. Okay. So here is the lesson plan template. Um, you might want to have however many tasks, depending on your grade level, what subject area you're in, if you're elementary, if you're secondary, just some good things to think about while you're doing this. Um, right here you have the day of the week, also making sure that you're putting the date there as well. Again, we're trying to keep everybody organized. So lesson one, uh, my title goes here. So I can say that this is, I'm just going to call it practice reading lesson. Okay, so I have two forms of text here. I have a bolded text and then a regular text. That bolded text could be um, where either um, you're having kind of some specific directions for your kiddos. Um, this could also be where you want your kiddos to work on, but that bolded text might be where you want to put your specific directions for that. Uh, underneath it could be the description of that or that's where you want your kiddos to work at as well. The next thing that we're going to talk about is some of the specific things that we can do and we can embed into our slide to help our kiddos be the best that they can be. So I'm going to put here Google Classroom link. And as you guys heard me mention earlier, we can embed an actual Google Classroom link into our slide. So that way when the kids click on it, they're able to see where they're supposed to turn in or where they're supposed to access that specific material. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to go to one of my Google Classrooms that I have set up. And let's say that I want them to go to this module one is this blended learning quiz. If I go all the way to the end, I'm going to see these three dots here. <clears throat> and I'm going to click copy link. <clears throat> and when I click copy link, I'm going to go back to my distance learning template and I'm going to highlight this text just so it looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. And I can press command K 
or control K, depending on what kind of device you're on. And I can paste that specific link to it. So when I click apply, whenever I click on this link, ta-da! It is exactly where my kiddos need to be. It shows this assignment, it shows what they need to do, and everything like that. It takes them directly to it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is some of the features that are on here as well, about how to add images, how to do your own video or voice instructions, and all of those different things. So the first one is to add images. This could be a picture of an anchor chart. This could be a picture of some kind of diagram or model that you want the kids to have. So to add an image, I'm going to go up to my top toolbar and I'm going to click insert image. And I could do a couple things. I could search the web, meaning that, you know, I'm going to look all over Google for this specific image. Uh, also, if you have this image in your Google Drive, you could do that as well. Or if you have something on your desktop, you can upload it from there as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on Drive so that way you guys can see that. It automatically defaults to recent. So your most recent photo is what's going to be there. So, for example, I'm going to scroll down. And here's an activity that I saw in a kindergarten classroom that I just loved. So I'm going to click on the picture and I'm going to click insert. And here's my image. Now I can take this image and I can shrink it down and put it where it needs to go. Also, these extra things that are on here, I can go ahead and delete those since we don't need those. Okay. And I can just put that wherever. The next thing is how to include video instructions. Again, this is an image, so I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to show you guys how to insert your instructional videos that you have. Um, this could be something that you found on YouTube. This could be something that you recorded yourself, either using Google Meet, Screencastify, your phone, your computer, whatever, as long as it's uploaded into Google Drive. Um, like I said, you can record using your phone. All you'll need to do is take your phone and upload it into Google Drive from there. Okay? So whenever I press insert and I go down to video, like I said, YouTube is already going to be there, so I can search for anything specific whenever I'm in YouTube. Also, I would go ahead and do by URL. That might be a little bit easier, so that way you know specifically what you need to add uh, to your uh, to your slide. Or if I'm taking a video that I've recorded previously, um, I can go ahead and find a video, and I'll do the one of me wearing the exact same shirt from the other day, uh, doing a read aloud. So whenever I do insert, you're going to see kind of some of the playback options and everything. You can mess with that. Uh, you can do the start and stop time, whatever you need to do. If you just wanted to play the whole thing, don't want to mess with it, go ahead and click the X on that. But I can now manipulate this to where my kids can see it a little bit better. Uh, I know there is a little bit of an issue if the kids are here. It kind of sometimes is hard to play, but if I click present, I know my kid, or it becomes a lot easier for them to see the video. So whenever, oops, wrong thing. So whenever I click play on here, I'm going to go ahead and mute myself. Um, they can view it full screen, so that way it's not like they're trying to see little people um, trying to manipulate this the whole time as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and exit out of there. The last thing I'm going to show you guys is how to add some audio instructions from there. And with this, I'm going to leave this up here while I kind of talk about it. Uh, there's no way within Google to record yourself doing some kind of voice instructions. You're going to have to use a third party application. And the one that I recommend the most, especially on the computer, is going to be Vocaroo. It's just something quick, simple, and easy. Alternatively, if you have your phone, you can use this, uh, any of your voice memo apps or anything, and then just upload it to Google Drive. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and go to Vocaroo so I can show you guys that. So whenever I go to Vocaroo, super, super simple. You guys will just see the red recording button. You'll go ahead and press that. And as you notice, the timer has started. So I'm going to go ahead and start recording myself. If you have to sneeze, you got to yell at the dog or whatever, you can go ahead and click pause. And it's going to pause the recording right where you are. From there, you can continue to record or you can go ahead and press stop. And that will stop your recording. Once you're finished, you can press play and you can listen to your recording, see if it's good enough, or you can redo your recording as well. If you're happy with your recording, you can press save and share. 
and then you're going to download this recording. So that way we can get it uploaded into Google Drive. So let me go ahead and go over to Google Drive. Now that I see that this is completely downloaded, I'm gonna go ahead and upload my file. So I'm gonna go to that plus sign with new, and then file upload. And I'm just gonna pick on my last one that I did, which I think is this one, yeah. <clears throat> Now, as you'll see, this will start to upload. Depending on how long your file is, it might take more or less time. Mine was only eight seconds, so that's how come it didn't take much time at all. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to my uh, distance learning lesson plan template. And just like I inserted the video in the image, I'm going to go ahead and click insert again. And I'm going to do audio this time. So now, Google is filtering all of my stuff in Google Drive to my audio things. And you'll notice I have two files. It has, Google Drive has it organized to where the most recent thing is going to be on your screen first. So I'm going to go ahead and click my most recent file. And again, I'll go ahead and see all of these different things. I can have it loop. I can have it stop on slide change and all of those different things. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and click out of that. But you'll notice that I have this little itty bitty a uh, little button that will be my megaphone so my kids can listen to my file recording. Okay. So these were just a couple of tidbits uh, to take some of our tips of the day from our instructional technology website uh, to make this a little bit more real for you and kind of show you some best practices when using some of these tools. Um, if you guys have any questions, you guys are more than welcome to reach out to me, Katie Guzman, or you are more than welcome to reach out to your instructional technology coach. Hope this was helpful. I'll see you guys later.